all right what's going on people welcome to another edition of every man's a millionaire today we're going to talk about paper millionaires versus paid millionaires but we're going to go way way deep got a comment yesterday and this is a common misperception that people think that most of the millionaires are like the Beverly Hillbillies or Warren Buffett or Carl Icahn. These are people who literally have tens of millions of dollars in the bank. They can write a check, buy the company, buy an airline. There is only a handful of people on the planet who can do that. A handful compared to the 7.5 billion people we have on the planet. I estimate that less than a million people, maybe like include the rest of the world, say 2 million people can, well, not even 2 million, not even 2 million. Going with the basis of a Carl Icahn, someone who could stroke a 10 to $50 million check, there's probably 30 to 40,000 people who can do that on the planet about 30 to 40,000, not millions, not even hundreds of thousands that can write those kind of checks and still live the way that they want to live. Very, very few people. So when you say millionaire, you have people that assume that they're living this life. So the average millionaire in America, it has his home, life insurance and investments and some other stuff that comprises their million dollar net worth. They're $1.52 million. So if you were to take the house out of it, they wouldn't be a millionaire anymore. I want you to really think about that. So this means that this group skews older, which is predominantly what's in my neighborhood. And when you get to having a net worth of $3 million, Check this out. Well, I'm I'm just going to take y'all through some of the research I did today because that comment, it's a common misperception that people think that all of these folks are like paid millionaires. And a paid millionaire is someone who owns a business and has millions of dollars of cash flow, not investment money, but cash flow money. All right. So get rid of all this stuff. Right now, there's roughly 14, just go ahead and say 15 million millionaires in the United States. And let's make sure we get all that. Okay, 15 million. But this includes the person who has a net worth of one million and one dollar, which can be heavily asset based, not real money. And I'm going to get into some of this stuff and we'll go here. Let's see. All right. So the higher your number, the less of you there are. So it's not that many people. When you, you start getting past 2 million, you know, it, it just drops off. It just really drops off. Now, here's where things start to get interesting. This is where the millionaires who have the mansions, like, okay, some of these houses are two and three and four and five and $6 million. You could, if you had a high enough income, because once again, there's asset based millionaires and there are equity billionaires where these people have cash or assets that can be sold very quickly to generate cash. You're not going to own a plane if you're a paper millionaire, not even a small one. You're not going to own a plane. You're you're not going to have a two, three, four, five, six million dollar house. You're, you're not. Typically, most of these multi-million dollar houses are paid for before they're built or paid for shortly after they sit down at the closing table. I mean, on the five million dollar house, because it's like five to six thousand dollars finance per million. That's a $30,000 a month mortgage payment. You know, let's say you make a million a year before taxes. So that is a, that's like 360, 
thousand, three hundred, yeah, three hundred sixty thousand. That's a large chunk of your disposable income. Then there's taxes. So with taxes and that, it's hard to do. I know it sounds crazy, but you know, uh, someone that posted on the video the property taxes, like my property taxes was sixteen thousand dollars. My property taxes. So when you get to a five million dollar house, you're looking at six figures in property taxes or close to it, 80, 90,000 that has to be paid every year. And also the carrying costs of living in a big house. Um, right here, just the yard man, the maid, the internet, the, we're at about two G's a month. Those are the carrying costs of maintaining. And then also, you know, uh, there's three air conditioning and heating units outside have been replaced one will have to be replaced that's going to be like five to eight grand right there because when it goes you got to immediately replace it so to show you that if you are not a cash money paid millionaire you cannot do a lot of these things if you're a paper credit millionaire you could possibly borrow a million or two but without that huge cash infusion infusion you could be struggling. You could be making a million dollar salary. And because you don't have the fundamentals of finance set, you could literally be struggling because you don't know how to handle money. Like me, I only live on what? Five or 6% of my income. If that, because I know my income can drastically change. Something can happen when the market, some can happen. So for me to live at the top of my income is just plain stupid. Also, if you have a business and you're making like 50, 60, 80, 90, 100 K a month that you could pull out the business and you pulling out the business, you are boo boo the fool. You should live like let's let's just keep it real here. You have a business that's making 100 K. You pull out 10 K a month to live on. You are balling out of control. If you have a business that's making that kind of money and you pulling all that money out to flex and stunt and you just blowing money willy nilly, I guarantee you it's going to catch up with you. Guarantee it. And this is something I learned in the storage auction business. Uh, there was this guy, he had a restaurant, uh, saw his taxes. He was doing about six million a year gross revenue. So he was taking home about 1.5. He had a Mercedes. His wife had a Mercedes. His side chick had a Mercedes and just basically going through the records. He was spending like 10 G's a month on his side chick. That's just crazy. But once again, you know, people do stuff like that. So getting back on point, once you get to 3 million, we're less than 2 million millionaires. Now you double that to 6 million. We're going to get to several hundred households. You bring that up to 10 million. We're going to get into the teens. We're going into the teens. We're going to get into 50, 60,000 people just at 10 million. You move it up to 20 million, we're cranking it down to 30, maybe 30, 20,000 people in the world. Now, that's it's, it's a lot of people, you know. I mean, they fill up a section of a stadium, but, you know, let's go ahead and just say around the world, 50,000 people. Can stroke a check for uh 50 million or 20, yeah, 20 to 50, just 50,000 people. Now, when you look at it that way, there's not millions of millionaires and there's not hundreds of thousands of millionaires. All right. So let me come out here and get back to the chat. All right. Now let's talk about private equity because this was another thing. Does anyone here know how private equity firms work? If you do, go ahead and just say, you know, write in the comments what you think they do. Private equity funds. Now, there's a uh, Ray Dal Dalio. He has the money to stroke checks. He can buy an insurance company. He can do this. He owns a company. And he has billions of dollars. But many of the people who work at these funds are employees. They're not founders. So all these equity funds, there's like a handful of guys at the top who have the 10 to 20 to 30 million. Everyone else is a worker bee. And I'm going to give you how this works. So let's say I own a Cameron hedge fund and I would go to college and I would find the best mathematician, the highly educated, the people with the skills I needed. And I would pay them coming out of college 200 K. And then I would give them a piece of the action. 
So let's say I have someone who's working in my shop. I'm paying him 200 K he's getting, doing good work bonuses. Let's bump him up to 500 K a year. So for five years, he works for me. So I pay him 2.5 million, but he makes me a hundred million. So it looks like they're making a lot of money. And this is why once they get in that world, they they're like, Hey, how do I get my own hedge fund? How do I, because they're like, yeah, I got paid 500 K. I maybe even got paid a million, but they made a hundred million or hundreds of million. There's not that many people. Once again, um, maybe corporate, corporate 30,000 firms on the planet that can do that. So it isn't like millions and millions of what I call paid millionaires. Most of the millionaires, as I just showed you, out of the 15 million, only 1.8 million have 3 million or more. The rest of them are asset bank based millionaires. So, and I'm also give you a little financial trickeration. I'll use me. Now I have a business that almost makes six figures per month. Now that gives me tremendous leverage, crazy leverage, right? And also the way that I stack money, because what I'm doing is this company is loaning my new company the startup capital. So how you know I'll, I'll talk about that in the art of holding. So every time I get paid, I stroke a check from Mac Daddy Media to the new company and I write loan. This is a loan at two percent. So this money is not it's two it's this money plus two percent so this is a way for me to hide money manage money and protect money because as i did in my other video where i was talking and people just didn't seem to understand the reason i didn't fall for the bitcoin buy on the dip stuff was i had no need to buy on the dip uh, you've got these private equity funds with these billionaires who literally can go out and stroke a check and buy a billion dollars worth of Bitcoin just like that. They're playing a different game. They're playing, you know, four, five, six, seven dimensional chess. They're not quote investors. They are raider, they're corporate raiders. And you know, it was in there, all of this stuff. Um the biggest company and go to the Google machine, Google, and look up GE. General Electric has made more millionaires than any other company. And I'm going to tell you how they did it. First of all, you work for GE. You got a 15% discount on buying the stock. Let me say that again. 15%. Then they added uh, a match. So it was really like you were buying GE stock at 35% off. GE stock was zooming at one point. So you're able to buy that a 35% discount anytime you want it. So this is how a lot of GE employees became millionaires because of the match. It ain't like that. You know, they just worked there and they bought the company stock. And after, you know, 20, 30 years, it was worth two or $3 million. But, you know, GE has come way down. So that was the thing. Cause I saw like several different things here and I'm, really sound on financial matters because I've been studying companies since high school. So when someone's like, Hey, corporate, no, 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 no. It's kind of like chicks in the ball. Thing, like, you know, all these, in it. you know, there's only 16 to 1800 NFL players in the world. Each team, 32 teams, they have what? 60 players. That's it. I mean, it ain't like it's millions of, you know, collectively NBA players, NFL players, baseball players, Hockey players, we're talking about maybe 15,000 dudes in the world. And then you want to add the actors and the rappers and all this stuff. Um, maybe 35, 40,000 people in the world, and the majority of them don't make millions of dollars. You know, if you're on the store, like uh, I was up for a reality show and I don't know what the guys for Storage Wars are getting paid now, but I know that first season they were only getting like six or seven thousand dollars an episode. They do twenty episodes. That's still a lot of money, but if you're on network star like Grey's Anatomy, they were getting like one point five million per episode. A whole different game. But all these people are not paid. It's just not paid, and. 
you know, people have these fantasies, and this is why I'm doing where the rich people in Atlanta live, and I'm telling you the inner workings of this stuff so you have the proper information so you don't go on one of these wild goose chases on these fantasies. Because the thing is, making a million dollars a year is very, 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 very hard. I know you got people here on the internet like saying that this is like, you know, they handing out million dollar checks like candy. It's not true. And I don't know how many of you saw this guy who was crying. Uh, he had 290 investor clients. and He lost all their money about eight days ago because they were in the futures market. They were betting on oil and gas and the demand for oil and gas has gone down. That is not good for a roaring, healthy economy. The demand for all gas has gone way down and they were doing naked options and some other very risky stuff, which if the economy was really booming, he would have been fine. I'm trying to tell y'all, I've been saying this since last year, get ready, start your businesses, get your hustles while you still can, because this thing is going to be very different than the last thing. Very, very different. One of the things, and also a lot of people, and I'm just going to say this. If you think you're smarter than me, start a YouTube channel, write several books, start another YouTube channel, create not one, but two learning platforms. Because if you're not my equal, then I am teaching you. And a lot of you are trying to buck up your little comments, but there ain't no receipts. I, I show you receipts all the time. So if you're going to come up in here and say some stuff, I want to see some receipts. And I don't want you to like run away and like a little kid, like, ooh, he asked for receipts. Uh, it just disappear and stop commenting. You know, I have control of who comments and who doesn't. Just so you know. All right. <laughs> I'm just cranky, cranky, cranky. All right. It's the holidays. Um, I realized... This is something else, too. I'm going to tell you another thing about multi-million dollar neighborhoods. It's Thanksgiving Thursday, right? These people are gone. The traffic is lighter. I took my X5 in because I had to do the brakes, and the parking lot was full. Why was the parking lot full? Because they're on vacation, and what's the best time to get your car service? When you don't need it. So I dropped my car yesterday. I'm probably going to pick it up tomorrow. Normally they do same day service, but you know, th this place it doesn't become like a ghost town, but the traffic patterns are noticeably different, like starkly different. You just won't see any traffic around here because all these folks are gone or they got folks coming into town because they have money. Uh, they're in their second or third house. It's been like this for years. But once again, if you don't live here, and I want to say thanks to the people who live here, who actually are, you know, on the comments, you say, I live here just like this, just like this, just like, because we have people who have a false narrative of how certain rich people live and certain rich people. Like many of you can become paper millionaires within 10 to 15 years if you do the right thing. And to become a paper millionaire is the starting point to become a paid millionaire. This is something you can do if you start making the proper decisions and you will need an economic engine such as a business to get rolling. Pretty planista. That's interesting. What's going on? Jeremy Westbrooks, Sense of Reality. What's up, Rose? <laughs> cool ass Uncle G that's cracking me up. Jerome Jones, what's up, Glenn? Thanks for the information. My son hustle made me 500 bucks in two days. There, there's so many ways to hustle. Congratulations, Jerry Jones. What's up, this dude, Bakes? Since reality, it's also a common misconception that network equals liquid money. Yes. Example, most common us think Jeff Bowles has 137 billion network. Means he has 107 30 liquid. Pretty much. And that that's one of the things I wanted to clear up because these asset based millionaires, which is the lion's share of them, 
if they had to stroke a check for 100 k many of them couldn't do it because all of their net worth is in assets. They could not stroke a check for 100 or two. They couldn't do it. I mean, it's not like they're going to go poor anything, but if they had to convert some of their assets to cash, they would have a hard time or they would have to have a fire sale to get money real quick. What's up, Lucid Dreamer? Uh, since Rally just filed my articles of organization for my LLC here in Missouri. Ooh, only 50 bucks. That's pretty cool. What's up, Chris Monroe? Deron Walker. Chris Monroe, wouldn't it be better to be asset rich over cash rich? Well, let's see. During good times, assets go up in value, right? Are these good times? See, you got to have the proper positioning because you just can't stay in one position for each and every economic event. Like me, I got rid of all my debt and I'm in a heavy cash position. Why? I believe, and I could be wrong, that next year the economy is going to crash, which means everything goes on sale. And he who has cash, move, 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 make moves, make deals. Like um, when I, when I got this house, right, I was making some crazy offers because I felt the economy was crashing. And I didn't want to get caught short. So um, virtually five of the people I made offers have reached out to me because they're still sitting on the property. That's why when I make these predictions, and I say this stuff. It's not like, oh, well, this sounds like good to say I'm living this. These houses are not moving unless they are tight and right. And what I mean is they're already updated. The person moving in doesn't have to do anything. Those are flying. But if your house is not updated, it ain't moving. Uh, let's see. Go down here. Uh, Everett used the Google machine. Dana Ch Hustler Porn. What's up, been the bartender? Oh, yeah, I'm going to speak on Bitcoin. Hold on a second. What's up, Diana? Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. Been sharing some stuff. Erica Williams, thanks for the $10 super chat. Facts, all these Lambo videos and folks making 10,000 a month videos. I go to conferences, events, and only me and a few other people in there over 10 a month. Folks are averaging 100 a day in the USA. See, Erica puts out a good point. There's a let me, let's just talk before I get to Bitcoin because I, I I'm not going to forget you, um, Rose. You know if you made 10k a month, you can have a Lambo in the big big house easily. If you made 10k a month, that's only 120k a year, which proves my point that it's very easy to flex because. It, there ain't that many people who can afford uh, a Lambo. 10K, you can get in there. Now, you're going to be paying like $2,500 a month, maybe three k a month, but you can push it. You can actually do that. And let's say your house is $4,000, you, you know, you barely have gas for the Lambo, but you can do it. And this is what many people do. Many people live above their means. So this is normal for a lot of folks. Uh, Rose. Okay. Now I actually publicly commented on a Bitcoin forum. Bitcoin dropped to $4,058 today. Then I was like, okay, what kind of countermeasures are they going to bring? Cause now let me see what is it? Cause they shot back up to 4,400, which tells me that people, cause they're trying to, uh, whales are buying more Bitcoin to push up the price. Because if it, because they don't want, they want it to crash. We don't want it to crash that fast. So they're they're because people are freaking out. All right, so Bitcoin's four thousand three hundred forty-two five hundred, and it's going to go down some more because there's not a new enough new buyers in the market. So right now you've got a lot of manipulation. Reggie World Music, how long will it take to make it crash? Depends on how much money they want to pull out of it. Once again, 
Bitcoin is fully manipulated. And you, you right now, you still have people out there who are saying, you know, that six weeks left in the year, it's still going to hit 18K end of the year or before the year ends. It's going to hit 50K. Uh, one guy saying 100K. Why they're saying all this crazy stuff when it's literally Rome is on fire before your eyes? Because they have economic interest. They're making money off of this. And this is why they keep gassing up people. And people are like, um, dude, you told me to buy on the dip at 12 and I bought on the dip. Then you told me to buy the dip on the dip at 10 and you told me to buy on the dip at, and you told me to buy the, on the dip at six. And now you tell me to buy the dip on again, essentially I have lost money all year long, but you keep telling me to keep investing in something that is literally crashing before my eyes. Crazy, right? Chris, you read about real estate. I've been wholesaling since August, making all bank. Uh, yeah, there's all kinds of income producing assets. Uh, today, let's let's go ahead and talk about my business because everybody wants to know what I do. When I worked in the hospital, I had the great fortune to meet Curtis Mayfield. And if you don't know who Curtis Mayfield is, Google it. Curtis Mayfield, Superfly. And he told me some information that I was way before I needed it, but I still got it. And he said, whatever you do creatively, never sell your work. And I took that part and I never sold it. I don't have any partners. I don't have any sponsorships. And today I uploaded a video that I, a podcast I did in 2013, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. So five years ago that is still making me money today. It's not making me like crazy money. It's going to make me, I'll look, probably 12 bucks this month. And next month, it'll make me another 12 bucks. So that one video will make me $120. Doesn't sound like much, right? I have thousands of videos. Income producing assets. Books, podcasts, videos. Uh, everybody's trying to get rich super quick, trying to get rich, super clean. I don't want to do any hard work. I don't want to talk to anybody. I don't want to do anything. I just want to collect money. And this is why most people don't know how to run a business. Well, I can watch a video and tell someone's legit or not instantly because the, the language they use, the words they use, there's just certain things. And like going back to Erica's point, there's a reason that many of these folks are stuck at 10,000. And I'm going to tell you why they didn't build their business to make more money. When you build a business, if you don't do certain things from day one, you actually stall the growth of your business. You've seen those pumpkin molds, right? Where they put the mold over the pumpkin and the pumpkin grows up into the Frankenstein face. Many people unintentionally do this to their business. They put a mold around it. They don't have the right infrastructure. So even though the pumpkin can grow much bigger than with the mold, because it has the mold around it, the lack of a proper infrastructure, this is as big as it gets. You always hear 10,000, 15,000, eBay, Amazon, because these folks don't have the ability, they don't have the knowledge and the skill sets to put processes into place where they can build a bigger business. Now, last year, uh, I was doing a lot of consulting and I didn't like the direction my business was going. So I scrapped it. But why could I scrap it? Because I don't live at the top of my income. I make less money this year than I did last year. But I don't notice it in my lifestyle because I don't spend all my money. You you got to you got to get away from that. And that's what most people want a lot of money to do so they can ball up and buy stuff to impress people they don't care about. So watch. And this is another prediction. If Bitcoin goes below 4,000, gets to 3,500, everybody that bought at 1,000 are going to unload because then that's like three times their money. They can lock in their gains. There will be a fire sale because you think they're selling now? No, no, because the whales are buying back stuff to increase the price, but they can only play that game so long. They can only play that game so long because they were so greedy and they rape people. <laughs> And there's only like 200, 250 people who own 75% of crypto. That's why they can manipulate. And this is something else too. 
The things that they've done with cryptocurrency, they could not do with the stock market because that would be illegal. But since cryptocurrency is not regulated, they can do it and it's legal. Broderick, I've seen so many crypto hype videos. It is literally melting before your eyes and they still like, it's going to good. It's going to be good. It's going to be good, guys. It's going to be good. It's going to be. It is literally melting down before your eyes. Uh, Jap on uh, dinosaur orchards, Japan and Israel just flooded the market with debt, dropped down, down like a brick. A lot of chickens are coming home to roost right now. Oh, since reality, I didn't know, sir. Yes, yeah, sir. Mix a lot. Made over a hundred million dollars from one song. Baby got back because he owned it. One song. You never know when you're gonna hit. Since really lifestyle inflation can be the death of any business. So it really can. This is why lottery winners, you get someone they'll win 20, 30 million dollars after you know cash, and they got 30 million dollars in four or five years. They because people are like, hey man, I need hundred K for a club. They stroking checks, they stroking checks. They get to the point where now they're in more debt than they've ever been in their life because they don't have money management skills. Like if I won the lottery, which would be impossible since I don't play, but if I played and won, I would go get my money that day. But I wouldn't take it in my name. I would take it in my business name because, you know, they got to publish, you know, like, oh, this business won it. And they, they can publish my business address because I'm never there. I would be able to pretty much cut off a lot of stuff because a lot of folks don't know you can go to the Secretary of State and look up the owner of the business. Garfield, how do you gather information from someone without looking like you're picking a person's brain? What you need to do is go out and get some receipts. So whatever you can do on your level, if you can make 1500 bucks a month consistently, there's going to draw some energy in you where that person will notice you. But if you're just coming like with empty bags and like, may I, may I please help me, help me, uh, more likely you will be ignored. You give you a great example. Uh, when I was coming back from Orlando, I was in first class points. You know, I know Dave Ramsey hates credit cards, but I have not paid for a plane ticket in about two years. Um, guy next to me, he looked like much. Right. We just started talking. Uh, the last two trips, I had two people who didn't want to talk. So I was like, dang, this is this is the first time this ever happened. But he wanted to talk. Uh, the guy's a real estate developer. And we talked the whole time. Because he recognized in me I was a business person. I recognized in him he was a business person. And come to find out he owns a race car, which you might get to see in here. I got his number. I'm going to see he's supposed to be in Jacksonville, January. So I may go down there with the drone and take some pictures and you'll see that. But essentially, you got to be doing something. You cannot be sitting on your hands and like people like just going to come in and give you all the key to the castle. You got to kill a few dragons. I mean, you don't have to kill the big ones, but you got to kill some small dragons. Um, one, you got to get solid, too. And what I mean, solid and stable is. You know, and for my younger guys, it may be easier. You got to get away from this debt. I mean, it is going to be crippling when these things go south. E. Hawthorne. I don't I don't read books. I write them and I'm not trying to be facetious, but pretty much it. Everything I've learned, I've learned from doing. I may read a book on the subject and then I have to reading the book is five percent of the work. Ninety five percent of the work is taking what from that book and putting it out in the world. So it's not the book. You can read any sales book from the 30s to 40s to 50s and then go out and execute that. I know been the bartender. Uh, Stan the man, Glenn, why don't you invest in the stock market in your opinion? I make more money. The stock market, if I ever got into it, would be, I wouldn't even, I would get into the bond market. And essentially, my I'll tell you my plan. My plan starting next year is to purchase it residential real estate, pay for it cash and sit on it. Essentially, I'm going to take this money I make from this business and park it in houses. Because once again, since I'm already wealthy, 
I don't need money to live the life I want right now. So I can put money here, put money here, put money here. And I'm going to tell you, I get to 20 houses that are paid off. And I'm not buying the 60, 70. I'm not buying those houses. I don't want to get in that market uh, with Airbnb. I can go out and buy a million dollar house and put it on Airbnb and trick that sucker out. That's my plan. I'm not investing in the stock market because I already know how to make a lot of money without the stock market. The stock market, you put in uh, what? Let's say you put in. Let's, well, there's the stock market, buy and hold, and there's trading. Totally different animals. So if I was putting money in the market, when I did, I had a portfolio, a seven-figure portfolio. But guess what? I put $900,000 of that in there because I was a business owner. And I'm sitting there like, wait a minute. I'm putting 50% of my income in the stock market. And the gains are nothing like the business that was generating the money to put in the stock market. So I just stopped doing it. See, part of this is, and this is a good question, is most of the advice that you get is for poor people. Rich people do not invest like poor people. Also, to even get a little deeper, rich people have options and exposure and access to things that you never even heard about. Like uh, Chase Private Wealth. They have this credit card with a $10 million limit. You ain't going to get that with your 100K. You ain't even going to get that with your million. But you got 50 million in a bank. Oh, here you go. Uh, also, there's something that's called an accredited investor. Uh, this is a person with a certain net worth, a certain savvy. Like when Facebook and Uber came out, none of us could have invested in them, even if we had the money, because we were not in that circle of accredited investors. See, there's accredited investors that can get into some risky stuff in the stock market. And there's accredited investors that if you don't know somebody, you ain't getting an offer. Gary V, bested in Facebook. He was already, I think, what, the company was doing $60 million, so they knew he had money to blow. This is what I'm trying to tell you. There's just deals that unless you're properly positioned, you're never going to hear about them. You're never going to have access. Most of the advice, uh, save money, put money in the mutual fund, put money in the stock market, dollar cost average. That's for poor people. That's for poor people, and that's why I don't do that. All right. Dwayne Bryant, preach coach G. I got guys selling their bitcoins and filling out job applications looking to make extra money for currency that they lost. You ain't seen nothing yet, Dwayne. Just wait. This is first stage of the meltdown because what they're going to do is try to prop it back up. Because once it gets to, quote, the support level of 6,500, everyone's like, okay, who, 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 who? Let me, let me take, because this is the argument why Bitcoin has a certain immutable value because it costs X amount of money of electricity to produce it and that's the store value let me destroy that argument very quickly let's say you're an internet marketer and you're running an internet campaign and you spend three hundred thousand dollars on your facebook ads and you make some very bad miscalculations you lose all your money so it costs you three hundred thousand dollars to conduct that campaign that doesn't mean that that campaign was worth $300,000. And this is why I'm sitting there because a lot of these people who are in crypto, they've never owned a business. They've never been through a recession. I've been through two recessions in my business and I've weathered both of them very fine because I was like, oh, the clouds are getting dark way over there. So I start preparing. First thing, if I had any debt, got rid of it. Uh, really didn't have to change my spending because I have what's called a set lifestyle. I have a set amount I pull out of the business. It's more than enough for me to do what I want to do. And I don't have to dig into other stuff. But yeah, just because it costs $5,000 in electricity to produce does not mean it is worth $5,000. And this is, I'm just, yeah, I don't even argue with them. They have never been in a real situation, real consequences, but it's coming. What's that saying? You're going to learn today. Dwayne, since the Bitcoin gods has failed them, they're purchasing a lot of a lot of tickets and hanging out with other people. Good Lord. You know what? I know what that feels like. There was a period in my life 
where I was not financially as astute as I am today. And I used to do a lot of dumb stuff. I used to take stuff to pawn shops. I did a title pawn. And one day, for some reason, I don't know what happened, but I took my last $200 and bought a bunch of scratch offs. I lost 50 bucks. I was just convinced that some good was just going to happen. That was just desperation. That's what that was. That was desperation. I was reeking of the cologne of desperation. And I know what they're doing. I know why they're doing it. And I'm going to tell you, it's, it's going to end very badly. I know, G. White. I know built to sell is great, 89 Dr. Funk. I agree. I've never been a fan of the stock market. It's never been built for hustlers like us, Crystal Monroe. Uh, Kevin Leary doesn't invest in a stock unless it pays a dividend. That's how rich people invest. They have put money in a stock that pays a dividend because they're getting some money back. Buy and hold like Warren Buffett, who's already fantastically rich. It works for him. He's always He's been rich for a long time. <laughs> the way he's gotten away from them, man, they're going to go down. Jabrash, you hit it on the head. Trading is completely different and better than investing in the market, in my opinion. I trade options. Yeah, if you're a trader, like at one point when Bitcoin was kind of stable, uh, in the morning, it would be $1,000 less than what it would be later in the day. And if I paper trade it, and this is when you actually monitor an investment and just trade, actually act if you're and, and I would have made anywhere from 800 to 1500 bucks a day for about three months. Now that's trading. But once again, trading is very risky. I used to date a girl who used to trade options like uh, Jabras here. From 10 a.m. to 2 p.m., she wouldn't answer her phone. She wouldn't even go to the bathroom. She said, you can't leave your computer because you, you go away for like a minute and something can happen. You can lose all your money. So you, as a trader, you have to be disciplined. You have to have a formula and you have to have a process because if you just there like swinging wild, okay. Uh, the 401k, absolutely. <laughs> GY, Bitcoin's going to 200. I don't know. Thanks, Alanis, Harlem Real Estate. G White, invest in the stock market. Okay, if you have time to do your research, but you need a business. Let me let me go ahead and just give you some basic stuff. And this is basic math. Say you make fifty five thousand dollars a year, then you start a hustle on the side that makes you just a thousand. If you were to invest that same thousand dollars in the stock market that you got from hustling, your hustling returns would be like exponentially like a thousand times more than your stock. This is why I believe starting a business, a successful business is way faster than this stuff because I I'm here to tell you that if you can get you a business, a hustle where you net out at five to 15 K while keeping your job, you will literally change your financial life. You may never become a millionaire, but you will be a cash person. You will have the ability to pay off cars and cash. You will have the ability to put money in the bank. You will have the ability that if you wanted to go first class to London, pay for a cash. You know, I was in the airport and, it, and Asians do a lot of stuff in cash. And this chick, somehow they missed her connection and she was pissed. Whenever you see a little Asian woman mad, I mean, really, truly mad, it is some funny stuff. And she's like, Went in her Louis Vuitton bag and pulled out stacks and was like bought four first class tickets to Singapore. They were like six thousand dollars a piece. In her Louis bag, she pulled out that cash, money, diamonds that were shining from like thirty feet away. In her Louis bag. This is something that. If you start making the right decisions, you can live that way. It will not be today. It will not be tomorrow. It will not be next year. But once you 
go through the barrage of bad decisions and poor financial decisions and start to get too clean. Um, I started making better financial decisions in the boarding house, and it still took me eight months to see the results of a decision that I made eight months prior. And that's where people get tripped up because it's like job. I go to work and in a week, in the two weeks, I get a check. That 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 does not work <laughs> with this other stuff. You like to do a lot of financial stuff because you were poor. Oh, yeah, I was doing stupid stuff. I remember I rented a washer and dryer from Aaron's rent home. Sure did. Little did I know that if I had a little financial discipline or if I just had worked overtime for a week, I could have bought a brand new washer and dryer. I wasn't thinking like that. Henry Ford, a lot of that name. Lost a lot of money dealing with cryptocurrencies and ICOs. One ICO was a scam. He ran off with the bag for real. The market wasn't regulated. So they were able to do a lot of things and get away with them. And a lot of people had their money stolen. That's just how it was. Uh, and now, if you know what you're doing, the girl I dated, she said it took her five years to develop her formula. And she lost a lot of money. And if you talk to some people, you know, because once again, we talk to other business owners, people who are real business owners. They've all failed. They've all made bad decisions. It becomes like, oh, remember, I, I did this. When you get when you meet real business owners, but when you meet people opposing or folks who inherited the money, oh, they are a whole different class. I've been the bartender. 15K a U is F you money. Yes, it is. Let's say you make 55 grand. You make a thousand, but you you practice sound financial discipline. You put it in the bank, and in three years you got thirty, forty k. You have become a new person. Yeah, a lot of people like discipline and goals because uh, one of the reasons is I get a lot of folks, and I understand that I'm bringing you information that some of you don't want to hear. Because I'm messing with your false narratives and you have nothing to replace these false narratives with. But when I roll around here and I've only done two streets, it may take me five or six videos to get more videos to get everything done because I'm just doing one street at a time in the Christmas special because a lot of people are putting up lights. They pay for people and I'm going to do that one. That may come before the North Side Drive or it just depends. But I'm showing you that these people are living in two, three, four, five, six, seven, 20 million dollar homes. You know what the taxes is on 20 million? I think it's 10,000 for 2 million. Yeah, it's like a hundred and hundred and fifty thousand dollars a year taxes. So the carrying costs on a crib like that is easily going to be like 10, 15 K a month on top of the taxes. So just taxes, carrying costs, we're talking about 300 to 400 K a year just to have the house. And this is when we start crunching these numbers and start looking at it, like, okay, as Erica pointed out, you notice how a lot of these um, business people on YouTube, you know how small their house is? Because when I watch someone, I look at the size of their house. I don't listen to what they say. I look at the size of their house. A lot of them are in apartments, which is cool. If that's what you can do, that's what you can do. But many of them are perpetrating the fraud of room to do what they're saying they're doing. Like Grant Cardone. Grant's got like 50 employees. He's got a whole floor because he's really making money. He's really running the business. Like I'm going to do a tour up in here because like I've set this up like this video is for process. This uh, workstation is for processing. This one's for work processing. This is the live stream station. I'm systematically setting this up upstairs. There's going to be a room. It's going to be another studio. Uh, the room off the bedroom is going to be another studio. I bought this house for YouTube. Harlem Real Estate. I have a baseline income as a landowner, owner, real estate broker, but need cash help to recommend teacher. Well, here's the thing. You should do what you know first. Forget what, like, uh, I don't know if you know how to do T-shirts. Here's why people fail when they try to do something that's hot. 
there's three learning curves. There's first, you got to learn what it is. Two, you have to learn how to manage it. And three, you have to manage the money. So there's three learning curves on this new thing that you've never done before that you've got to learn. And most people are trying to learn it as fast as they can, and they're going to make mistakes. Uh, the t-shirt business is vastly different than the sock business. The sock business is vastly different from the underwear business. There's uh, routine procedures that come with that that you're not going to learn overnight. So you're trying to learn these three different things about this business. And, oh, yeah, you still need money coming in for you to live on. And you wonder why people fail. G. White, I paid off my house and cars today, uh, day trading, but I had a job in another business. Well, congratulations, because you did something remarkable. You got some receipts. I know, Ben. I know uh, he, he's doing that thing. And that he has, that's a $65 million jet. And some people are like he's leasing it. Like leasing a jet is super easy. Like anyone can lease a jet. Even if he's leasing it, it's still millions of dollars a year to lease that jet. Maybe he is leasing it. Maybe he has a jet. Like, you know, one of the things with Ty Lopez is like, oh, God, he's renting that house. Like 15K is something that anybody can come up with. Like, oh, yeah, it's just 15K. It's $185,000 a year. He was renting that house before he started even doing the YouTube thing. Think about it, which means they checked him out and it's like, okay. You got to have an income of 50 G's a month for we want to rent you this house. Uh, yep. <laughs> Leasing a jet. And this, this is the science. Like, all right, when I look at people, I hear what they say, but I look at how they live and I also check out their Facebook page. Uh, there was someone who was talking about, you know, he was this good and doing this stuff. He had a GoFundMe. For a surgery for his dog, the surgery was on two k, two thousand dollars. So he wasn't making nowhere near the money he was pretending to make because he could have had his dog hooked up. There's just little things you can look at. Everybody's not going to have a car. Uh, there was this one guy. He was doing crypto heavy. He was a poker player. His place was laid, nest on the wall. You can see the size of the room. Just little stuff. Oh, uh, Dwayne Bryant. Coach G, I live in a poor community. I noticed that my credit card limits weren't as high as they should be. So I have a 780 credit score. You must have missed that. I talked about that. This is part of what banks do now after the last recession. You can have a 780, you can have an 820, but if your income isn't high enough, someone with a 680 can get a higher interest, higher credit limit than you can. They'll pay a higher interest rate. But they can get it. So, oh, dang. So I changed my address to a rich neighborhood and everything changed. I even saved almost 2000 on my car insurance. <laughs> you get the slow clap, man. You get the slow clap. So, and I haven't even talked about my mail is so different. And I only moved three miles from where I used to live. The mail is totally different over here. And this is, an, I'm also doing the rich people of Atlanta as a intellectual curiosity myself because I've learned so much. And I'm just sitting there like, this is why they built this over here. And this is because the way that this is set up is just set up for the CEOs and the lawyers and stuff. Ty's a good porn star. He said he signed up for my free training, but if you want to go deeper, you have to pay. <laughs> um, a lot of people like Ty, Ty Lopez because Ty Lopez figured out that YouTube advertising was super cheap. Uh, when he started, you can get 10,000 views for 10 bucks. Now, you would be lucky to get 10,000 views for 100 bucks. Uh, YouTube advertising was very, very cheap. And also, it's going to become cheaper again in January when everybody pulls back. No, so that, that's that's all I wanted to talk about because, you know, 
you, you got people here who are who have this romanticized concept of wealthy people and this false notion that they live a certain way and they operate a certain way. Most of them are just regular. Well, they're not. Yeah, they are. They, they, they're normal. Let's put it this way. They're normal people in their presentation. They just have a lot of money. And I understand why people want to normalize them. Like, yeah, this rich guy in my neighborhood, he has the biggest house. So you can feel that you're kind of close to that, even though you're so far away from that is ridiculous. Uh, there is no text notification. You must have missed the last stream uh, a few streams ago. Someone reported me for doing porn because I sent a message to go to disruptive mail and I had girls in bikinis. I think one girl was naked. I think she was naked. So they reported me. Yes, I have haters. Uh, Stockbridge is trying to succeed. Um, I live in one of those neighborhoods. Sandy Springs seceded from Fulton County. And they took a huge chunk of the tax base with them. Yeah. Uh, I live in this neighborhood for a reason. When I came over here, I got lost and I was like, oh my God. Who... It was just mind blowing, right? Because I've I've never knew to the extent how this was built. Because I'm probably gonna do a map in one of the uh, rich people in Atlanta just to show you what I call the wealth corridor, and it, it's just mind blowing. When I changed my Craigslist and FB ads to a better zip code, I got more sales. Wow. I Craigslist protocols because this neighborhood, I think that helped me tremendously with that. Uh, go below and get on the free books and you can get on the email list. That's what I've been using because it's been a challenge to try to find a replacement because I met somebody at Vid Summit last year and who hooked me up with this company who turned out to be because, you know, I was really upset because it's like, okay, you broke these rules. Don't do it again. But no, they just canceled the whole account. Just gone. <laughs> oh yeah, it, it is um, crazy. So with that, with that, the today's Black Friday special, number eight or number nine, one of them is 55% off Hustlers Undergrad. 30 minute conversations with me. 2019 you can use at any point anytime and okay we're having issues with that because the streams got jacked up so that links below and i've had a lot of people say like, hey you know i get paid friday fine it will be available all of the black friday specials will be available for you good folks friday 11 59 p.m pacific time because i got love for folks in cali who who like man you you you, you forgive the buzz california people man so i got you covered cali all right so with that i'll see you guys tomorrow tomorrow's wednesday i might see you thanksgiving just depends on what's going on and definitely friday good evening be sure to go below and get your free books if you need some help hustling free gift from me to you and with that, you guys have a great evening.